Managers hate it. Uh, it's a I, I do not aggregate or store logs. We've all heard enough of everyone's best practices in software development, and today we're meeting with Termi to learn about his worst practices. So tell me more about yourself and what kind of software you write. Sure. Uh, I've been in the software game for quite a long time, worked everywhere from your browser down to uh, bare metal, done cloud distributed computing. I'm mostly a Python developer now. I'm working at a uh, in an aerospace company managing all of the data acquisition for test stands, um, as well as their cloud and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but the thing I'm talking about today will most likely be uh, most relevant to people who uh, manage a lot of servers. Great. Yeah. So what is your worst practice? Uh, man managers hate it. Uh, it's a, I, I do not aggregate or store logs. Uh, I do not think it's a uh, valid use of my time, um, I suppose. Um, I find that the first time you go to check your logs in something like Kibana, Elasticsearch, et cetera, um, is the first time you found out, find out that your log storage uh, system has broken two weeks ago and you actually haven't been storing anything. It filled up a disk. Um, so congratulations, you now have a whole, whole extra job that is unrelated to your business practice um, and unrelated probably to any of the work you're trying to do. Um, I think as soon as you are storing logs, uh, developers will uh, either turn on debug logging um, or start moving more and more things that would should have been debug logs into info logs. Um, I think programmers just like to feel that the computer is doing something, seeing text scroll by the screen. Um, like if you're using a software as a service, if that's still a term that is used, yeah. uh, log aggregators, uh, those are... Um, they're cheap for the one computer that you tested it on. Uh, and then as soon as uh, d your developers find out you're storing logs, you will uh, you will immediately um, go into the next price tier. Um, it, it will, uh, you'll start finding dmessage logs for like the host machines of your cloud computers and stuff in your logging aggregator that you will never, ever, ever need. Um, but, you know, just in case uh, tends to be, tends to th the, be a thing. So, yeah, what do you do instead of using aggregated logs? Um, I use, what I use is uh, I basically create events and event logs. Um, so rich, uh, rich events um, that represent meaningful actions in the system. Um, so you want to be able to audit like activities in your, in your system and know when somebody, you know, tried to make a significant change. Um, but you almost certainly don't need to know the number of something that's happening. Like in the this, this stuff that people generally put in application, uh, like application logs. Um, uh, so I make the events tedious enough to have to describe that they don't get used for every line of code. Um, for what it's worth, the same thing applies to tracing. Um, so open tracing, Jaeger, things like that. Uh, you will immediately fill up your hard disk. Um, and the first thing everybody will do is turn on automatic application tracing, which literally will trace every line of your code. Um, and it's just not interesting information. Um, those types of things looking at logs and looking at those types of traces is when you're debugging something. Um, and if you can't reproduce a problem, it's not um, likely to happen that often. Um, well, that's probably more of a worse practice, but uh, <laughs> the, do that one another time. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, I definitely don't think uh, we need to be storing all the logs that we're storing. Great. And well, instead you should make you rich events. Awesome. Well, thanks for telling us about your worst practice and joining us and uh, appreciate it. Thanks, Brett. Thanks.